In a previous episode, we took a look at a scrapped 50 watt carbon dioxide laser cutter and assessed whether or not it was a candidate for repair. Over the last few weeks, I've been installing new hardware and new optics, and Dan from Awesome Tech has very, very kindly sent me a Mini Gerbil 3 laser controller to try out, so let's head down to the shed and take a look. So since the last episode, I've spent quite a bit of time refurbishing this Chinese laser cutter. The, one of the first things I've done is replace the plastic from the lid. It was all cracked and warped, so that's been replaced with a brand new sheet of plexiglass. Let's have a look and see what changes I've made to the laser cutting head itself. So this is the business end of the laser, and I've actually replaced the entire top half of the carriage here. Originally it had this with the turning mirror and the focusing lens on the bottom and this rather sort of janky uh, air assist that looks like 3D printed plastic to me. It's, all of this has all sort of collapsed and fallen to pieces. So I've been waiting for a, quite a few weeks now for this thing to turn up from China. Uh, this is actually, the, the whole thing is aluminium and it's got the air assist connection on the side. Um, yeah, everything's all good. When I actually replaced uh, the old thing with the new thing, it's, it's quite obvious that the optics are really quite dirty in the, uh, in the old setup here. Uh, because when I did a test cut, I could drop the power by about 10% and it would still cut through 3mm plywood, no problem at all. So probably one of the best um, upgrades for this machine so far has been this new head. I'd mentioned in the last episode replacing the actual controller out of this thing and I have gutted it. Um, so here's everything that's going to get turfed out. I've got the motor controllers, probably hang on to those because they'll be fairly useful. And we've got the Litro controller, which I'd already said in the last episode, are not the best controllers in the world. These things require a proprietary software that requires a dongle and they're just generally rubbish. They won't work with light burn, which is, you know, the, it's the industry standard now for laser cutting. Um, so out it comes. I've got a little switch mode power supply that I can make use of. And well, the old controller will probably go in the bin along with the original Litro controller. Anyway, let's look at the changes that have been made here. So since the old control electronics have been pulled and so is the panel, the panel is useless now. So I've replaced this with something a little bit more suitable. I've replaced the hole, well, into the hole, I've put a piece of uh, like five millimeter plexiglass and mounted on a milliameter. Um, of, of all of the upgrades that there are for these kind of lasers, a milliameter is again, one of the most useful. Um, you know, you've got to be able to keep an eye on the tube current when you're doing cuts or what, you know, cuts and engraving or whatever, um, so that you don't end up in a situation where you might be overdriving the tube. And it's, it's just kind of useful to see what's going on. It's an indication that something's occurring without having to defeat interlocks and stick your head under the lid. Um, the reason for plexiglass for this will become apparent in a minute when we take a look at the new controller. Um, obviously there's some additional stuff I want to mount on here, um, maybe a little switch and a, a potentiometer just as I can test the, you know, fire, fire the laser for alignment purposes, but I'll, I'll come to that later on. So let's have a quick look at the innards of this thing. If you watched the previous video, it's quite apparent that I have absolutely gutted this thing. There's hardly anything in it now, right? Um, whereas before it was full of power supplies and the giant Litro controller and other bits and pieces. So we'll just have a quick uh, look and then we'll, we'll focus in on some things. So down at the bottom here, I've got the uh, Awesome Tech Mini Gerbil 3, which I'll go into some detail about shortly. I've got two power supplies at the back. I've got a 24 volt supply for my motors and then a little five volt supply for the logic for the mini gerbil. The um, power supply, the high voltage power supply actually has a five, voltage, uh, five volt rail in it, but I couldn't get the data sheet on this and then therefore couldn't really figure out what the maximum current draw from this should be for, for five volt logic rail. I think it's just for the uh, PWM stroke uh, analog modulation that this thing has. So I, I thought it was expedient just to buy a, a switch mode power supply uh, to, to generate my five volt rail. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the Mini Gerbil 3. So this is the Mini Gerbil 3 laser controller from Awesome Tech. Uh, full disclosure, Dan from Awesome Tech actually contacted me and said, hey, do you want to, uh, do you want to have one of these to play around with? Uh, and of course, absolutely I do, right? Um, also full disclosure, in the email uh, that I was sent there, I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm under no obligation uh, to say anything good or bad about it. So I can say what I like, which is really, really nice as well. And um, it sort of uh, tells me that the company with whom I'm doing business has at least confidence in their product, which is really, really nice. Uh, let's have a quick overview of this thing. We've got a little power connector on the top here. Uh, this is just a, a, a standard power connector. We've got 24 volts, 5 volts and 0 volts in. We've got our laser on signal, which goes back to the laser power supply. 
and this is configured on this board to be active low so when it's on the when it's a zero volts essentially it turns the power supply on um, and when it's five volts it'll turn the power supply back off this though is uh, configurable you can actually configure figure it in the firmware so if you've got some kind of odd setup where the power supply requires active high well you can just enable that in software in, in the firmware and you're done uh, which is really really nice you want something that's you know, if you're going to produce a board like this, you want it to be at least compatible with a, a wide range of machines. Uh, similar story for the PWM. Uh, the PWM is set up and configured for K40 style lasers, and so the PWM frequency is quite low. Um, and yeah, once again, if you, if you want to uh, connect this up to a diode laser, for instance, and you will require a higher PWM frequency, like one and a half kilohertz, two kilohertz, whatever, you can actually configure all of that stuff in firmware as well. Uh, to, to connect it up to the power supply is like ridiculously easy as well. Uh, we just we just run the PWM pin to the in pin on the uh, the CO2 laser PSU and we're done. Um, so very very easy to install. It has to be said. We've got the usual stepper motor drivers down here. These are actually quite common. In fact, they're so common that should you manage to blow one of these things up, um, you can just unplug one off the board and replace them. Um, so that's a really, really nice feature as well. I suppose out of all of the Boyd, the, the single most likely thing that's ever going to fail is going to be the stepper motor drivers. And um, yeah, so nice that they're unpluggable as well and replaceable, you know, user replaceable. That's, that's a really nice feature. Um, for hooking up the stepper motors, again, it was a cakewalk. Um, my stepper motor uh, cables had no uh, no plug on the end of it. It was just pin connectors, but it was easy enough to just replace them with the appropriate plug, plug them in. Um, and you're done. This this is almost a drop-in replacement, um, which I find absolutely fantastic as well. We've got the usual LEDs. There's only two lit at the moment because I've just got it connected up to the PC and there's no uh, there's no program running or, or power delivered to it. But there's plenty of uh, LEDs that light up uh, to allow you to debug the board as well. So you can see uh, when the laser should be on and you can see if the PWM signal is being driven and, and everything else. So all in all, really very, very nice. Uh, would I pay 115 US dollars for this, which is the list price? Absolutely. I mean, I was about to anyway until I was sent this thing by Dan. Um, absolutely, I would spend 115 bucks on this. Dirt cheap, really, for what it can do. It's fully compatible with Lightburn as well. It's, it's practically plug and play. Uh, plug it in, select your laser controller, uh, start cutting, start engraving. So very, very nice. Um, in the last video, I said that um, I wasn't really sure on the pronunciation of this, whether it's mini gerbil or mini gerbil. I think I'm just going to call it mini gerbil. It's uh, somebody put in the comments last time that it'd be it's kind of awesome to think uh, like a little furry animal is running your laser. So, yeah, let's go with gerbil. Uh, but yeah, very, very nice. It has to be said. So I'd mentioned earlier that I'd used a piece of plexiglass to mount the milliameter on the front of the uh, laser cutter and the reason for this is so that we can look through and see the debugging lights on the Mini Gerbil 3. So if anything peculiar happens during a job we'll be able to have a look at the debug lights and see what on earth's going on. So a very very nice feature that those things are available and I think a really good idea to actually make the board visible somehow in your laser cutter. Obviously we want to see this thing do something, so let's uh, let's close the lid up on this, fire up the computer and uh, run a couple of jobs and see how we get on. So I have Lightburn running on the PC here. The Mini Gerbil 3 itself will actually run with any G-Coder uh, sender software that you like. It actually shows up as a serial port on the system. Um, I'm not affiliated with Lightburn, but I do like the software and at some point I'm gonna buy the license. I'm currently on the trial here, but for testing purposes, it's just fantastic. So I've got a little job here. Um, with a couple of layers on it. Um, I've got an image in the middle that I want to engrave and then a border that I want to cut. So we'll fire this stuff up and have a look.
So now that the job's finished here, let's see how we did. That is absolutely fantastic. Excellent. Let's fire through another job. All right, let's see what kind of job we've got here. Seems to have followed all of the nice curves very nicely. Let's give it a quick shake. Excellent. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. That's done a really, really excellent job of following all of the curves. Very, very nice. This CO2 laser cutter restoration project has worked out really very well indeed, and I now have a very capable and useful machine at my disposal. The Mini Gerbil 3 has proven itself to be an excellent little control board for this system and is easy to install and highly configurable. If you're looking to upgrade or refurbish a machine like this, I would highly recommend these boards. I'll put in a link to Awesome Tech's website down below. Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.